Ah, achievements, eh? We've all done those things for achievements that we're not particularly proud of, but then there are those that we have done which we can say, wow, well, that was a good grind, but enjoyable. Then there are those that just make you almost want to completely shove your middle finger straight up and tell the achievement hunter world to go fluke itself. Hey guys, the Welsh Hunter here, and I am back with another top 10 where we will go through some of more, some more of life's most boringest, grindiest, luck-based, hardest achievements. Developer store was a great idea at the time, so much so that at one point you had the thought of, "What's the point? I can't be asked anymore." With tears rolling down your face. Of course, not to say everyone was like this, but the majority, defo the majority. So let's crack on. Number 10, Rock Band 2, Bladder of Steel achievement. Now this probably wouldn't make you ever quit achievement hunting altogether, but it definitely would make you think of quitting doing it in the world of Rock Band. If it was a case of just play through the endless set list too, then it's fair, just fair. But no, Harmonix decided to up the amp. By not only do you have to play through all of the set all at once, which can take over around 6 hours easy, but you cannot pause the game or fail a song. So you have to be tactical with it. You gotta make sure to choose the bass guitar, because it's the easiest one. And have a friend or two come over to take over when you're on the verge of absolute death and anger. Nobody's even this tactical in the real world. I mean, it is a relief once it's gotten, but my god, how many people have thought, screw this, especially if they fail towards the end. 9. Cluster Truck. Beat the game without using abilities. This was a surprise for me, because one, I haven't actually played it, and two, I thought it was sort of easy enough, but there's one achievement that you need, and it needs us to beat the game using no abilities whatsoever. For the most part, it is relatively painless, but there are just a few levels that will not only test your patience, it will test your whole ability to give two flying monkeys asses about achievement hunting after this one. That's what makes it worse though, if a game has relatively easy or decent achievements, to then throw one at you which you can rip the pubes off of yourself, can give you the almightiest of migraines, it's probably not worth it. Number 8, Goat Simulator, Flapmaster. <laughs> the less said about this one, the better. So for about 98% of Goat Sim, 95, 98, the majority of achievements are fun, easy and all around enjoyable. Then the devs decided to piss literally everyone off and chucked in the Flapmaster achievement. Now, for those that are new to gaming in general, Flappy Bird was this bullcrap, well, bird, and he had to press the screen to go through what uh, between what looked like Mario pipes. Sounds easy, but it was challenging, yet addictive. So in comes Goat Simulator with the same basis, except you have to get 10 in a row for the achievement. Now again, this one could be easy, but the hit detection in this game is genuine garbage. So you can press the Y button, only to be delayed by literally a second, and have your run ended, and the wall looking mighty tasty to stick your head through. So many people almost gave up on the game's other achievements altogether thanks to this one. <laughs> Damn. Number 7, Undertow, Lord of the Deep. Now this one isn't hard by any means, but my god it is B-O-R-I-N-G-H-I-B-O-R-I-N-G-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-H-
Why? Stuff like this, without the ability to have a, a good collectible map or anything, truly does give the average achievement hunter the ability to think, balls to this, you've ruined my achievement hunting days, I'm done. Luckily, my good buddies over at Achievement Squad created this magnificent guide showing you where all 750 orbs are, but as far as others went, this was the final nail in the coffin for this game. There are others that didn't even start it just for that reason. Number 5, The Crypt of the Necrodancer. Impossible, right? Now, I was going to do the bat trick achievement in which you have to kill three green bats, but they literally show up sort of in one out of 400 runs, which is just insane and it's very, very rare. But upon further review, I decided to do the impossible right achievement in which you have to complete all zones mode with Coda. Now, Coda is basically a combination of all the other characters, but what makes this bat short and shine is you can only have a dagger, or you only have a dagger, and half a heart. Coda moves faster, as well as the enemies as well, but the big thing is, all enemies drop gold when they die, and you cannot, you cannot, pick up any gold, because then you'll die. Something else, oh, there was something else. Oh yeah, you cannot stop moving. If you miss a beat, you die. So you have to pour in literally hundreds and hundreds of hours, knowing each path and what to do, etc. And that's even before starting this. Kind of like Bender in that one Futurama, uh, Futurama episode where he's got the bomb strapped in him and he's got to keep dancing. It's exactly it. If you move once and you miss a beat, you will die. It's so rare, in fact, that a grand total of z z z z zero people on True Achievements have unlocked this. Middle finger? Where is it? Ah, th there it is. Number four, The Witness challenge now, normally you wouldn't expect to see a sort of average puzzle game on any list like this but hey this one made it why you ask well this is just the goddamn randomness of it all and i am really not a big fan of just rng at all and this one takes the cake for one it's 32 pounds okay which is just goddamn ridiculous for a puzzle game and although it is very good there is just no way you can do this challenge achievement without any uh, or with any online help as the puzzles change literally all the time the entire challenge is timed too, so if you take uh, too long on one puzzle, you'll have to fail and go again. It's one that will live long in the memory because many, many people decided to say, F you, I'm done. A lot of people have completed this, and fair play to you, but a lot of people have said, up your guts, and never bother with any puzzle games again. Number three, Batman Arkham City Challenges. Now there are plenty of challenges in the world of every Batman game, but I have to give the biscuit to Arkham City. Why is it worse, you ask? Well, because some of the extreme, and I mean again, bat shite, excuse the bat pun there, stealth maps and the fact that you have to play every single challenge map 12 times, and that's three times for each character. Once, normally twice for the challenge campaign, something like that. Uh, but it is just such a long and grindy completion that Really, towards the end, it, it really just sucks the fun out of it. It can be very unfun at times. Even with a guide for a lot of the stealth maps, it's just... Oh, your breath becomes a total of zero as the oxygen just sucks you dry. And that's not even a good pun. Now, remember what I said earlier about games doing long, grindy stuff, right? Again, Arkham City went the other way. You just put more and more bullcrap ones in, basically just to prolong the game, potentially. Not to say that these games aren't good, in fact the Arkham series is one of the best in gaming personally, but these challenge achievements almost make you not want to bother at all. Number 2, Monster Hunter World, Miniature slash Giant Crown Master. And welcome to another random, uh, random generated shove it up your butt style annoyance of an achievement, or two shall I say. The Mini and Giant Crown Master's achievements need you to obtain Mini or Gold Crown for many monsters in your hunting log. Again, one that could sound very easy until you realize you have to pick up all footprints while you're playing in the game and you have to basically delete all the investigations that don't have at least one silver or one gold. It's kind of complicated to get your head around until you start playing it. But this is the randomness now. You can get that investigation, but a lot of the time you will end up having one silver or one gold. You just have to play it to know what I'm on about. Uh, you can wait for events that rotate uh, to make things slightly easier, as there are more, more monsters, but still, to have such an innocent sounding title to one that is so random that you want to tear your teeth out, it comes as a little surprise to learn that 1% out of 221,000 players on True Achievements have actually unlocked this. Number 1, Halo Master Chief Collection, The Lasso Master. 
You knew it was this, didn't you? Complete each individual game-specific lasso playlist to four, two, four, every Halo game. And that is Halo 1, 2, 3, and 4. Okay then, so what is lasso? Lasso basically stands for Legendary All Skulls On. Legendary, as we all know, is hard, but do Skulls On help you? Well, they help just about as good as a punch to your testes. All skull on, all skulls on means reduced ammo and weapons, reduced slash no checkpoints, stronger and more aggressive enemies, no HUD, the list goes on and on. So I mean, if you fancy a nice Sunday chill out and get fuming ranger with pure anger and hatred towards achievements, then give this one a go. Remember, you have to do it for all four games as well, so if you haven't given up on achievements by the time you have finished this, I owe you a £10 slash dollar dues. I'm already having half a stroke thinking about this one, to be honest. And there we have it there, guys and gals. There's just some of the most boringest, grindiest, random-related, skill-based and all-around hard hatred achievements to ever come out of a dev's mind. So if you have done any of these achievements and either didn't get put off by going for more, or didn't let it bother you, then you have my utmost respect. But for those that have attempted this, I would be very interested to hear what you were thinking of, just screwing off achievement hunting for good, or did you decide to come back to it eventually, or did you just think, you know what, I prefer the outside world now. Let me know in the comments section below, and again, huge shout out to all my Patreon supporters, thank you so, so much. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and share with a friend as well, and I'll see you in the next one, bye, 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 big love.